Hello everyone, and welcome back to El Chick Music. Today's video is going to be stop torn life hacks for small handed people. I really could have used this video a long time ago myself because stop torn was never a strong point for me. And let's blame that on my small hands and that I often chose to play on large throated horns like the Con 8D or the Holton 179. Fun fact, I went to the Science Museum a few months ago and they had uh, some sort of a device that tests your grip strength and it would tell you, you know, if you had the grip strength of a child or an adult woman or an adult man and I did it myself and it turns out I only have the grip strength of a 12 year old child. So I'm not just making excuses when I say that stop torn can be a little bit more challenging for people with small hands. Or maybe you are also a 12 year old and playing on a Con 8D, which many students start out on. Or maybe you're just a short adult like me and are looking for some stop torn tips. So I've got my smaller than average hands. I've got my larger than average bell throat just to make conditions as not ideal as possible. But fortunately, I've learned plenty of life hacks throughout my horn career for stop horn. So let's get started. Now, I wanted this video to focus on stop horn life hacks rather than how to play stop horn. But a quick refresher on stop horn in case you need it is that stop horn is a sound effect that we can make on our horn by closing off the bell opening which creates a shorter horn because if our hand closes off the opening, then there's less that we have to blow through before we get a sound. So to make up for this, we also fingered the note that we want down a half step. So for example, if we wanted to play G stopped, we would finger F sharp, close off the opening with our hand, and it would sound like this. Here's open G. Here's stopped G. It's also often advised, especially if you're first learning this skill, that you use stopped fingerings that are on the F side of the horn. But we will talk about this later in the video. Let's get started with those life hacks. Perhaps the most obvious stopped horn life hack for small handed people is to not use your hand and to instead use a stop mute. This uses all the same concepts that we just talked about with stopping the horn, except instead of closing off the bell with your hand, you're gonna do it with the mute, but you're still gonna finger your note half a step down. So here's that stopped G with a mute in. Easier said than done because this method assumes that the composer or arranger left you enough rests at the beginning and end of the stopped passage to put the mute in and take it out comfortably, but often they don't do that. And besides, hand stopping is a skill that we need to have either way. So here are some more tips for hand stopping with your actual hand. All right, now we're getting to the good stuff and we're getting to so good of the stuff that I'm going to change my camera angle. That's more like it. If you haven't already checked out my video for how to put your hand in the horn bell, make sure you check that out. I also filmed that one from this angle. And I know I'm sitting super weird in my chair right now, but it's to help you see what I'm doing with my hand when I stop the horn. I promise I do all of this sitting in a chair like a normal person when it's in context. So while we're at this angle, let me remind you that when we play stopped horn, we don't wanna to have to put our hand any farther in the bell than we would normally put it. So we're gonna put our hand where it goes and we don't wanna to have to do this and then stop the horn. That's how we're gonna get a stuffy sound. And we don't want a stuffy sound, we want a sizzly sound. Another common misconception with stopped horn is you just put it in there and plug it up. And notice how my thumb is nowhere to be found when I do this. You do need to maintain your regular hand position shape as well when you play stopped horn. So our next life hack is to put our horn up and put our hand in how we normally would. And then instead of just going for it, we want to think of our hand like a swinging gate. 
So we're gonna bring that palm across the bell. My fingertips are gonna stay where they were when we started. And you can give the heel of your palm a little press into the left side of the bell. And then here's our note. And remember too that stopped horn doesn't need to be an airtight seal. In fact, you need a little bit of air to escape so that you can have a sound at all. It just needs to be mostly closed off, especially between your fingers. This next life hack is the best one. And I wish I could take credit for it. I'm not 100% sure who the originator was on this. Is to take your hand, make sure your hand's relaxed. In fact, make sure your whole body is relaxed. Nothing on the horn is helped by being more tense. So make sure your hand is relaxed. Make sure your whole body is relaxed. And then put your hand in your hand position. Put it in the bell. Bring that palm across and stop it. And then while it's here, give your hand a little bit of an extra twist. So that'll help, like we talked about a moment ago, get a little bit more of a seal between your fingers and still make sure that you're pressing your palm into the wall of the bell, the, the heel of the palm into the wall of the bell. And then here's your note. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Let's even play some music. This is a fairly well-known stopped horn passage and a good starter stopped horn passage from the Glazunov Reveries. <laughs> to its usual playing position because I hadn't moved my hand any farther in the bell than it needed to be. I got one more life hack for y'all and that is to experiment with some alternate fingerings. In general, I do tend to stick with using F side fingerings when I'm playing stopped because I think that the longer tubes give you more of that sizzly sound, but every horn is different and every player is different and sometimes things can be inconsistent. So if you are playing stopped and you notice that there's one note that doesn't sound the same as the rest, try and use a different fingering for that note, even if it's much less traditional than you would expect in that range. So for example, I'm gonna play a little chromatic scale. <laughs> I thought that the E flat that I just played one on the F side was a little unstable shocker in that range but so instead of doing one on the F side I could try thumb one and two on the B flat side and see if that makes it a little bit more even <laughs> that helped. As unexpected as thumb one two on the F side in the middle money range of the horn might be, it helped me get a more consistent tone throughout all those notes which are right next to each other. And you can do that in any part of the range. Experiment with an alternate fingering for a note that is not as consistent with the rest as you're playing stop horn. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe, hit that like button. Let me know in the comments suggestions for future video topics and check out some of my arrangements too. I like to play arrangements by myself and other people often in my pajamas or a low budget costume. I put out new videos on Tuesdays so have a great week and see you next time.